Yeah, what's what's interesting to me is like one of the things I think is very cool about power sports and and motorsports just in general is of all the activities like that humans engage in, it's like it's a natural way to challenge like competitive drive and innovation in a manner that like trickles out, um, and, and you can glean a lot from it from various industries, which is why a lot of these big OEMs have race programs, you know, and try to draw them if, um, whenever they can, and. I think one of the things that's very, very interesting is from a, I think the problem set that a, like a regular OEM has is it's maybe a little bit different because their, their operating parameters are much different than a motorsports like capacity, especially for something like as violent as King of Hammers is right you know, for instance, or even going up, you know, Pikes Peak, They're, you're, you're talking about considerations and for some of our customers, we, we, we're going through this right now with a whole series of things, you know, they, they do X, Y, and Z with their vehicle and their vehicle is in a very, very specific, I can't go into too much detail because it'll tell everybody who it is, but a very, very specific like operation, operating conditions, right? There's not many people in that space and they pay a lot of money to operate at that level, right? Because that has to be a vehicle that performs in this performance capacity, um, in a manner that they, they, they want to be essentially um, segment leading. And then it also has to be a road going legal that, you know, NISHTA is compliant with all the NISHTA regulations, um, third party regulations like IIS, IIHS and things of that nature. So it's very, very interesting to see how much emphasis architecturally is placed on certain things where you, you're, you're, you're placing modules or, or placing various parts of the vehicle and protecting for other systems, you know, there and of, right? And I, I can only imagine for you just like from a thermal management perspective of, of, of what these vehicles are, are being asked to do. It's, it's kind of, there, there really is nothing else like it. Right. And, you know, thermal management essentially limits a lot of EVs potentials, especially production EV potential where they can be significantly uncorked if you, if you really wanted to, you know, get down to, but from a safety perspective, you just simply can't because you can't manage, you know, um, like the waste heat for these inverter systems and things of that nature. You can. I mean, sometimes I get asked, you know, the question of, you know, what what's the hardest, most complex part of of what we do? And thermal management is it. You know, thermal right. management is kind of the core um, of of really, you know, optimizing, you know, whether it's performance or efficiency or or anything. That's that's really kind of where the gold is. And um, but you know, the the motorsport thing has always been interesting to us, and. I, I would say that the the adoption, the transition to um, to new technologies around hybrid or electric, you know, so many of the the large OEMs have been focused on consumer vehicle applications, and you know, they they really haven't had the room. They've been hyper focused on, you know, what what do these, you know, what's the use case? What do these products need to do? What's you know the performance, and everything? And so you see these really hard limits where, you know, there's there's kind of like this teasing of performance and and you know you feel the acceleration and everything but then when you put it in a motorsport application they fall on their face because they were never designed for that and so you know we we've missed we've missed the grassroots kind of adoption of, of electrification um and so one of the, one of the kind of missions of hypercraft from the very beginning which you see some early some early work in motorsports was to to as we developed product and, tech, and technologies to s continue to support the motorsport industry with access to it, um, and in the way like we want to get in the hands of the builders, the creatives, the you know the fabricators, those that are that are kind of excited about pushing the cutting edge, and we're learning you know so much with them, like Scalar, <clears throat> which is a Canadian company um, that we did the the Toyota GR86 program with. Um, I just talked to him yesterday and. You know they're, you know they're running, um, you know lap times uh, over a second faster than than a, a nine eleven, um, you know, um, uh, I think it was the 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 GT four RS. Okay. Yeah. You know, so it's a so like a NASA GT two class. You know, they're right. running faster times in in a GR eighty six than than that car, and you know we we're starting. You know, we're learning a lot. We learn a lot in motorsport. We learn a lot with, with also what the motorsport community needs 
to be interested in electr electrification because that's the other part of this is, you know, we've had so much kind of like pushing on the rope with, right. with electric that we're, we, we want people to be excited about, you know, what it's capable of and, and learning with it as well. And um, so, so it's a cool space. We're, we're pumped. So, so in, in your mind, let's say from like a motor force perspective, look, what are they, I've, I've, a, I have an idea of maybe where it will go, but like the need, right. And what, what did, what is the, in, the input that you're getting or the asks to, to drive maybe the adoption further or to push the boundaries a little bit farther, um, than, than currently. Right. Yeah. Um, I would, you know, it's kind of a funny, a funny thing because, you know, the drive to win is kind of the, like the core DNA. Like what I love about motorsport is that they're, they're technology agnostic and that's why so much innovation happens sure. because like as soon as, I, I mean, you know, I, I mean, if, if somebody came up with a way to, you know, to, to do something with, you know, hydrogen tomorrow in a more support app. Like, like we don't really care what the sure. the, te the true technology is. And so, you know, it's, it's really always been, the ask has always been about understanding how to apply it the right way in the right application, you know? And so that's, that's where like our partnership with uh, Sierra car and nitro cross in close course rally cross racing um, with the Sierra car platform for the 24, 25 season is huge because you know, it's such a perfect use case for electric powertrain. The The driving experience is amazing. So we've leveraged it like hill climb racing, you know, all, there's, there's so many different applications, but I think the idea, my perception is the motorsport community is like, we're not going to have electrification shoved down our throat and told that everything that we're doing has to be electric, right? Because, because there's a lot of places where, where it doesn't fit. I mean, we've loved the concept and we've even put out, you know, some information on development that we're doing for the Baja 1000, right? Like we'd love to see, we'd love to see a real, you know, engineered solution for the Baja 1000. And, and we believe there's a path to it, but that is a very challenging application. Like there's no way you enter that in year one, year two, probably even year five, um, and, and are going to compete with the existing technology. It's a long path. Um, but there are, but there are like the more conversations that we have, we've learned that the ask is really about, you know, is, is it formula drift? Is it, you know, rally cross or closed course racing or hill climb racing, or, you know, is there a class in NASA or are some of the off-road racing organizations willing to put in short course racing for electric, um, like King of the Hammers is to do a short course race where it's much more technical, but then electric really shines because the power management, the torque, traction control systems, you know, are so much more advanced when you get into the world of electric and then people get excited. So the, the organic adoption is, is really important to us, you know, um, and we're pretty patient, you know, not going to happen overnight. 